Hello, all you beautiful babes out there. Today, we're going to do something a little different. Uh, my friend Matthew, otherwise known as Elk Tears in the stream, you may you may be familiar with him. Uh, he's a huge Cube fan, and he asked me tonight which I would rather have in the Cube, Factor Fiction or Mole Drifter. My answer was immediately Mole Drifter. I think Factor Fiction has actually become a little too expensive. Four mana's a lot. And Muldrifter does a lot of things. He's good in the blink deck. You can evoke him. You can reanimate it if you really need to. It attacks. It blocks. It wears equipment. Like, it does a lot of things. Factor Fiction is just a run-of-the-mill instant. And there's tons of cards that do what Factor Fiction does. Often at less mana. But this question got me thinking. I wanted to see his cube. And then he sent it to me. And he asked... He asked for a specific card. There's a specific card I said I liked. Oh, Cruel Ultimatum. We were talking about Cruel Ultimatum because he included Dream Halls. And I think Cube Hall, uh, Cube Halls, Cruel Ultimatum is a necessity when you're playing with Dream Halls. It's one of the better payoffs. Cruel Ultimatum and Inspired Ultimatum, they both do a great job at filling your hand while also giving you a win condition and or board advantage if you happen to peter out. Like, if you go Time Spiral, Sail into the West, Time Twister, and then you're like, okay, but I need a way to win the game. So sometimes you actually need a little bit more, and Cruel Ultimatum and Inspired Ultimatum are great ways to do that, while also, while also playing big, cool spells. So I had him send me his list, and I thought it would be fun to just go over his cube and see what inclusions I do and don't agree with. And one of the things I noticed immediately was that his cube follows the... Magic Online Vintage Cube very, very closely. Almost too closely. And I'll mention this when we get to cards that particularly uh, fall into that category. But right now, I just want to go over the cards and see what I do and don't agree with. Um, I don't consider myself a cube expert, but I do consider myself a cube aficionado. And maybe a cube expert. But either way, I love Vintage Cube, so does Matthew, and um, I just want to give my two cents, and I thought it'd be fun to go over some of these cards. This is his cube. He has labeled it the Lament Configuration. He's a huge uh, film fan, so I'm not sure if that's from a movie. I also love movies and films, and uh, I, have no, I don't know. Esper Sentinel, Giver of Runes, Mother of Runes, Student of Warfare, Thraven Inspector, and Usher of the Fallen. These are all very, very standard um, one-drops for white. Nothing really out of the ordinary here. Adanto Vanguard, Containment Priest, Intrepid Adversary. I don't have Relic Warder in my own cube. Um, I think the double white for this effect is just not very good, and I think Lauren of the Third Path already does this really well. I just don't think it's super necessary. Um, but you know, I, I don't begrudge someone playing it. I just think it's a good, it's a, it's a slot you can free up easily. Lion Sash. I do like Luminarch Aspirant. I like is in my cube as well. It's not in the vintage cube, the magic online vintage cube. If I refer to the vintage cube, I'm going to refer, I'm referring to the magic online vintage cube. Selfless spirit, spirit of the labyrinth is interesting. Hmm. I guess this is fine. I don't really necessarily have a strong feeling on this one way or another. I think it's good for the the white-based uh, taxes decks. Uh, Stoneforge, Thalia, Tithe Taker, and Wall of Omens. All of these are fine. I'm actually going to pull up my Vintage Cube as well, so I have a frame of reference. Interesting. I have far fewer... Um, no, I don't. No, I have the same. Instead of, for one drops, um, I have Giant Killer instead of Usher of the Fallen. But we both have six one drops. Um, so yeah, not not super, not super different there. Um, he has a lot of three drops. There are a lot. I think Adeline is great. Blade Splicer, Spellbinder, Flicker Wisp, Lauren, Mentor, Legionnaire. Ranger Captain of Eos is interesting. There's Battlefield Search for Library for one drop, and then you put it in your hand. Um, and then you can sack it to silence your opponents. I, I don't think it's bad. I think it's totally fine. I don't personally have Recruiter of the Guard. 
And the reason is simply that um, this kind of effect you want to use to get combo pieces pretty often. And I think Impure Recruiter is doing that. Like, I don't really, like, getting a creature with toughness two or less just isn't super impressive for three mana in the Vintage Cube. I mean, if you were getting, like, a, like I think there's three cards like this. Three one-power three-mana creatures. And it's it's Recruiter of the Guard, Spellseeker, and Imperial Recruiter. And Imperial Recruiter gets the combo pieces for Splinter Twin, including um, Pestermite and Kiki Jiki. Spellseeker gets things like Ancestral Recall, Demonic Tutor, Time Walk, etc. Recruiter of the Guard, in its own color, doesn't really do much. And I just don't think it's worth the three mana. Apparition is fantastic. I don't think Thalia is, is worth it either. I mean, because the, my, my theory, my thinking is that Thalia is making your creatures, your opponent's creatures come into play tapped. The decks you're going to be worried about their creatures, you should be able to out-creature them if you're playing Thalia. And the decks you're not worried about creatures, then her effect just doesn't do much. Um, I don't think it's, I guess it's not bad. I took a Vryn Wingmare because I think having this high of a concentration of taxes cards in in white is kind of frustrating. Um, I think Thalia is really good. Tide Taker is really good. Um, you know, creatures like that. Um, I have anointed peacekeeper in mind, which I think is really good. Elite spellbinder is really good. These cards that are kind of thought sees light are really cool. Um, but I guess it's like, I just don't, I, I think this card is kind of unfun and you don't really want to play a two, one for three. Um, and I just think it combined with Thalia, like it just it just locks games out. It's just like okay, this and Thalia. If they if they get both, it's just not as fun. I did update my uh, Fiend Hunter esque card to Werewolf Bodyguard as well. I think it's very sweet. Matt has White Plume Adventure. I think as far as initiative cards go, this is the least fun one. I think I would add Season Dungeoneer instead of this because that's what I've done. Um, and then I have Siege and Dungeoneer, I have Caves of Chaos Adventure, and I also have Under Mountain Adventure. Those are the three um, initiative cards I have. So I just think at three mana, this guy is a little bit oppressive. And that's why it's banned in Legacy. <laughs> um, I think I have a significant amount more four drops. He has Hero of Bladehold, Palace Jailer, Resto, and Sarah Paragon. I have two more, actually. I have Alesh Norn, the four mana Alesh Norn. And I also have uh, Seasoned Dungeoneer at four. So yeah, I think you could take one of these three drops out and just make it a Seasoned Dungeoneer, the White Plume Adventure. And then, then you just have a better four slot and a less clogged three slot. For fives, um, he has Archangel Avacyn and Solitude. I don't think Archangel Avacyn is good enough anymore. I, I, I think it's... I think it's day is kind of done. I have guardian scale Lord because I'm extremely impressed by it. I think, it, I think every time I get a guardian scale Lord, it just perform it outperforms. It, it performs significantly better than I expected to. Um, I didn't think it was doing much. And then I played with it and I was very, very impressed. Um, reason being like, you can make a big creature on the turn. It comes into play. Uh, get something big back and then it's just a sun titan every other turn because its power is three like and it flies <laughs> you know and it's a it's a five minute sun titan basically on every every subsequent attack um so i would even like i would even put this in over sun titan if i had to choose one um and we in mine i also have triumph of saint catherine um which is, I wish, I, I, I'm going to see if I can find a way to show some of these cards that are not in here. Oh, that's not going <laughs> to, well, let's go to Scryfall. All right. Um, Triumph of St. Catherine is this 40k card. Uh, it's a 5-5 five, five with lifelink for 5. So this is taking up the Baneslayer Lyra spot, the 5-mana the, the, the creature with lifelink that has 5 power, right? When it when it dies, exile it in the top 6 cards of your library in a face-down pile. 
if you do shuffle that pile and put it back on top of your library. So you're basically shuffling her into the top six cards and she has a miracle cost of two. Very frustrating to deal with. Um, not super easy to, to, to get rid of. Um, thought it would be fun to try. So that's what I have. I do have steel Seraph and sun Titan in my cube. Matthew just looks like, unless I see it in the artifacts. Yeah. It looks like he just has sun Titan. I think steel Seraph is great. I did not think it was great at first, but it fits into a lot of decks. It fits into channel. You can channel it into play. Um, you can, cast it as a three mana kind of vampire night hockey type card. So it's another three drop for the white deck. I, I think I, I didn't, I wasn't high on it at first, but it's overperformed for me since then. And the and Iona, the last two big creatures, Gideon wandering emperor and Elspeth son's champion. Those are the same ones I have, except I also have Gideon Jura. I think Gideon Jura is still good. Um, Actually, no. Instead of Gideon, ally of Zendikar, I actually have Archangel Elspeth. Which I think is fairly similar. <laughs> they both plus one to make a creature. No, Gideon actually is zero to make a creature. This one plus one to make a creature. But then for negative two, you put two counters on a creature and it becomes an angel and it gains flying. So giving any one of your creatures flying seems very, very good. Um, if you can get her to negative six, then it's another sun Titan effect. So I don't know. I, 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 I think it's more comparable to Elspeth Knight Arant, which I think is fine. And this was my replacement for that. So I thought it was fine. Uh, condemn is an interesting choice. I do not have a condemn. Matthew also doesn't have enlightened tutor. I don't have ephemerate either because I don't really have a blink, a super strong blink component in my deck. I don't have mana tithe either. I think Matt's leaning more heavily into like a white taxes strategy. Um, I do have reprieve. I have, I took out unexpectedly absent. I now have stroke of midnight as an instant. It's the three mana generous gift, but it makes you the creature a one, one. So, or the, the, per, the permanent one, one, a one, one human, which I think is probably better than unexpectedly absent for three mana. You're just getting rid of it. I don't know. We'll see. I don't have faithful, faithful absence. I don't think, I just think there's better options for this. I don't know. Like I would even play stroke of midnight. I'd rather give them a one, one and be able to target any non-land permanent then give them a clue. But yeah, my, my, my instants are enlightened tutor path swords, reprieve and stroke. So I don't have ephemerate condemn also seems weird. I don't know if I love condemn because you already have path and swords. So it's pretty heavy redundancy. Uh, balance. I have, I do not have wins. I might add wins. It's in my maybe board. I do have Lingering Souls, Council Judgment. I have, I used to have Savine's Reclamation, but I took it out because I think there's just... I would rather have a card like Guardian Scale Lord than Savine's Reclamation. I think it just has a higher bar. Um, and it's doing a very similar thing for five mana instead of three mana. Armageddon, Wrath of God. I do have Armageddon, Wrath of God. Instead of Spectral Procession, which I don't think is great, I have Amiria's Call because you can just play it in the white deck as a land or you get two four four Angels. They're not similar on cost, but they are similar uh, in what they do. They make flyers. Um, so wedding announcement is an interesting choice. I have invasion of Gobicon. I think that is a significant, like, especially if he's leaning into the, um, the taxes strategy. Like this is when it enters the battlefield, you look at their hand, you may exile an online card from it, and then it costs two more. So it's basically the elite spellbinder ability. And then when it transforms at the beginning of your end step, put a one-one counter on each creature that attacked. Sacrifice the light shield array and creatures you control gain hexproof and indestructible. So it's it's fulfilling the the uh, plus one plus one effect in the cube. I do have Elspeth Conqueror's Death, Leyline Binding, I do have Parallax Wave. I also have Touch the Spirit Realm which I like a lot more than ephemerate. Um, so my thought is this is a lot more versatile than ephemerate. 
Uh, discard it, exile target artifact or creature, then return it to the battlefield. So you're blinking a card. So if you go to Ephemerate, exile a creature you control, then return it to the battlefield. So basically, this can hit their artifacts or their creatures. So you can exile tokens. You can get rid of, uh, I guess, tokens. But you can also save your own artifacts or creatures that are getting targeted. Ephemerate only hits creatures, and it only hits your creatures, so significantly more limiting. Touch of the Spirit Realm, also, if you don't want to do that, you can use it as a way to get rid of an artifact or a creature, so it's just another removal spell. This feels like such an upgrade to a card like Ephemerate. I would definitely consider adding that. I don't. I also don't think Prismatic Ending is super necessary. Like, there's just so much removal already that does a similar thing. I mean, especially with Leyline Binding, Elspeth Conquers Death, uh, Council's Judgment, and Unexpectedly Absent and Fateful. Like, there's just so much going on. Like, I, I just don't think it's needed. But that's my thoughts on the white. And that was 16 minutes. Let's do blue as well. And then we'll make this a thing and we can go over the rest on different days. How's that sound? So, for the blue... We have, I like Ledger Shredder a lot. I also like Rona. I think Rona is a great inclusion. I have, I have most of these. I took Thassa's Oracle out. I just don't think it's, I think it's far too narrow. Unless you're milling yourself or your opponent, it just doesn't do anything. Like I want cards that fit into more than one archetype a lot in my cube. Like I, I think if you put a bunch of cards that only fit in one archetype, you're going to find a lot of cards tabling. And that's what I don't really enjoy. So like if you know a card's going to go 13th, 14th, 15th pick every single draft, if someone's not going for that archetype, and even if they are, sometimes it's not great. Um, I do like Ledger Shredder a lot. I think it's very good. I would like to include it in my cube. I just didn't want to pick up another one for like 17 bucks because that guy's still really high. Um, I... Other than this, I, I think I have most of the same cards. I like Aether Channeler, but I think I took it. No, I still have it. It looks like one card I did add was Aboleth Spawn, which is a really weird one from uh, Legends of Bald Battle for Baldur's Gate. It's a 2-3 flyer. No, it's not even a flyer. I thought it was flying because it looks like it's floating, but it's really just underwater. It's a swimmer. It's a 2-3 flash with Ward 2. Whenever a creature entering the battlefield under opponent's control causes a triggered ability of that creature to trigger, you may copy that ability. You may choose new targets. So if they play like Primeval Titan, Grave Titan, Zealous Conscripts, you get to copy those abilities. And it just seems like a solid body. It's just a 2-3 three for 3 with Flash with Ward 2. Like, it's just kind of a cool interaction. I would probably put that in here instead of Hull Breacher. Matthew has Hull Breacher in saying like, there's... There's a cycle of like really oppressive initiative cards in his in his in his cube. He was saying, um, which included Undermountain Adventurer, Caves of Chaos Adventurer, um, the three mana guy, White Plume Adventurer, and from the Catacombs, I believe it is. Yeah, from the Catacombs. All of those give initiative, but the blue version is Hull Breacher. That's like the broken blue card. But honestly, I don't think. From the Catacombs, Caves of Chaos Adventure, or Undermount Adventure are, are that broken. I think they're all very reasonable initiative cards. I think the reason White Plume Adventure is so broken with the initiative is because he costs three mana. And he's just a very solid card. Um, so, yeah, I don't think that really checks out. I think, personally, I would trade White Plume Adventure for Seasoned Dungeon Air, as I mentioned, which is a four drop instead. And then I would replace Hull Breacher with something more fun. I think Hull Breacher is a really, really unfun, oppressive card. And I think that's why it's removed from a lot of cubes. I think that was, it was taken out of the Vintage Cube on Magic Online. And just a lot of people don't have it in their cube because it just turns off so many strategies. Like preventing players from drawing cards in the Vintage Cube is just not that fun. I mean, sure, Narset does the same thing, but you're not benefiting from that. Like if I play, if someone plays time twister with a nar set out you draw one they draw seven that's already great but if someone plays it with a hull breacher out not only can the hull breacher attack you it's a creature but you can flash it in and surprise them and 
they make seven treasures instead. So it's just like not fun. I don't know. It just puts you so far ahead and it's just not a, it's not a fair magic card. Like that's why it was designed for a commander set. And that's why like you have four opponents or three opponents that can actually deal with this. It's just a much easier situation. Other than that, like everything else here, Uh, I do like Trinket Mage and I kind of want to find a spot for it. True Name Nemesis is another card similar to Hull Breacher where I think it's a little too powerful. I'm tempted to put it back in, but it's just a card that like you have to deal with it, but it's really fucking hard to deal with. Like it's just not, it makes games not fun. Like the Vintage Cube has a super high power level, but the, but the power level shouldn't be this card is unbeatable and you just lose on the spot. And I, I think that's why I took out a lot of Storm. And that's also why, like, I don't have True Name Nemesis or Hull Breacher. Because um, even cards like Bribery, as I've gone over, like, you can beat them. Like, I've I've beaten a Bribery tons of times. You know, it's just, it's five mana. You can bounce the creature. You can get rid of it. You, if you Oblivion Ring, for example, that kind of effect on a creature they take with Bribery. And then you kill the Oblivion Ring, you get the creature back. Like, there's tons of ways around bribery and i don't think the play pattern that bribery produces is the same as like true name nemesis where it, it like needs like a shieldred's edict or a lilian of the veil or um toxic deluge displacer kitten was another card that i think is really sweet with specific combos like planeswalkers low cost artifacts things like that um I also took Glenelanger Archmage out. I think the play pattern Glenelanger Archmage has is not that that fun. Like if they land this with like mana up every turn, it's just not great. Like you need two removal spells for this. You can't cast any big spells. Like it's just kind of not fun. And it's also not a great threat. So it's like, it's not doing the things you want it to do super efficiently, but it's still really frustrating to play against. Um, metamorph is great i don't have subtlety i think the card is fine but i'm just never super impressed with its ability i always want to play it as a three three but at four mana that can only target creatures or planeswalker spells it's kind of awkwardly positioned like if you're on if they're on the play and they go urza on turn four and you have three mana you're just like okay now i have to play something to deal with this urza but I have subtlety in hand and I want to keep subtlety up as well. And it's just a super awkward, it's a, just an awkward card that like, I think it's been fine when I've had it, but I'm never like super excited about it. I'd much rather have, if you're going to have a, a four mana blue flash, like counter spelly card, I'd much rather have Urtai because it doesn't care if the cards come down yet. Like if they cast an Urza on turn four, I can go to my turn four and kill it with Urtai. And it doesn't look like Matthew has Urtai in here, which is interesting. Because I think Urtai has been fantastic. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that would be my suggestion. I just think it's it's just think it's kind of it's kind of meh. Um, no Sower of Temptation. I still have Sower because I think I still think it's a solid counter spell. I have Riftwing Cloudskate and Muldrifter. It looks like he has Arcane Savant, which I really really like. This is in my maybe board. Maybe I take out Riftwing Cloudskate for Arcane Savant. I can see that. This is a card I've loved forever. Um, I had this in my cube for a while and it's super fun to get like expensive cards. Matthew mentioned getting upheaval with this. So that way you play Arcane Savant, he casts upheaval and you bounce your Arcane Savant, which still has upkeep on it or upheaval. So then you can play it again and upheaval again at a future time. It's kind of sweet. Um, I have a significant number of six drops more than he does. I have Consecrated Sphinx. Cyber Drive Awakener. And this is kind of an obscure one. Uh, it's a 4-4 artifact creature for 6. Other artifact creatures you control have flying. And when it enters the battlefield, each non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. So your, your bobbles, your talismans, your vaults, your crypts, <laughs> all your, all your non-creature artifacts are now 4-4 four, four flyers, which get flying because of this guy. Um, I had Tezzeret the Seeker in here for a while, and I think this is just a better finisher. It's a 4-4 flyer that just has to be dealt with, and then it gives, like, your Mirror Battlesphere flying. It gives all your artifact creatures flying, which is pretty sweet. 
Um, so yeah, I added that guy. Uh, other than that, I have Kyrie the Swirling Sky, which is the Neon Dynasty dragon, the 6-6. When it dies, you choose one. Uh, you can return any number of non-land permanents with total mana value 6 or less to their owner's hand. Or you can mill 6 cards and return up to 2 instants and sorceries from your graveyard to your hand. So it does some pretty cool things. I also have um, Greater Good in my cube which, which I, I wanted to try out because I think being able to play like the big dragons from Kamigawa that have triggers when they die and then draw like six cards and discard three. So you, you net three cards and then have the two effects as well. Um, seems like it could be strong, but yeah, Matt just has torrential gear hook. I also have consecrated Sphinx and I'm probably not going to cut a consecrated Sphinx, but the magic online vintage cube did which makes me think he might have for that reason. For seven drops, he has Hellbreaker Horror. I also have Inkle Leviathan still, because I think it's just a great finisher. Um, a lot of people are down on it. I still have won games with Inkle Leviathan for as long as it was in the cube. And that's another card the Vintage Cube cut on Magic Online. So fascinating. We both have the same two Planeswalkers, Narset and Jace. I used to have more. Now I do not. Stern Scolding I did not include. I just... I'm not super impressed by it. I also don't have Brainstorm in my cube. I just, I'm personally not a huge fan of, of Brainstorm. Um, I don't know. I, it's, I know that's just me. I know a lot of people love Brainstorm. There's just, unless you have a way to shuffle your library, I think it's kind of narrow. But I, I know that's just a personal choice. Um... Days, Flash, Mana Drain, Mana Leak, Miss Caliper Man. I also have Snap. I added Snap after the Vintage Cube did, and I think it's been a really, really good inclusion. Um, I think one of the best parts of Snap is untapping like a Gaia's Cradle or a Telerian Academy. Um, those have been super sweet, but also being able to snap a creature, untap, and then like still remand or Mana Drain. Um, if you have like blue green mana, you can also snap something, untap two blue, and then mana drain. Like, it allows for a lot of sneaky plays, which is kind of sweet. Force, Frantic, and Thirst are the three I have as well. Cryptic, Memory Deluge, and Turnabout. I have Factor Fiction still in my in my cube. I have fa Factor Fiction and Memory Deluge. Both of them are doing similar things, and I can definitely see cutting one of them. I think like Riftwing Cloudscape, I just didn't have the heart to cut Factor Fiction yet. So, uh, Force of Will, Gale's Redirection, and Mystic Confluence are the three spells I have. Gale's Redirection is just a fun one that I added. It's a five mana counter spell similar to like Desertion, which I like a lot. Exile a spell, then roll a d20 and add that spell's mana value. So let's say I counter a Cruel Ultimatum. That's my go-to. I... I roll a d20. Let's say I roll a 7. Add that to the 7 for Cruel Ultimatum. I rolled a 14. 1 through 14, you may cast the Exiled card for as long as it remains Exiled. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. So I just have to pay 7 of any color next turn. Which presumably is the next turn of the game because I'm countering it on your turn. So I get to play your Cruel Ultimatum. If I rolled one more and got a 15+, plus, you may cast the Exiled card without paying its mana cost for as long as it remains Exiled. The interesting thing about Gale's Redirection is that it's similar to Reprieve. It doesn't say counter target spell, then exile it. It just says exile target spell. So if they cast an Emrakul, you can target it with Gale's Redirection. You can exile an Emrakul, then roll a d20. And you will always hit 15 plus because his casting cost is 15. So if they channel Emrakul, well, hopefully they're doing it on when you have enough mana. But... Nevertheless, it's just a kind of a cool inclusion. It's it's It fits into kind of the Mystic Confluence role as well, where it's like, sure, this is an expensive counter spell, but the things people are doing in Vintage Cube are often kind of broken and powerful, and being able to just steal the spell is kind of nice. So, seemed like it'd be fun. Um, I also have Sublime Epiphany, because I have Torrential Gear Hulk, and I think if I'm focusing on Torrential Gear Hulk, I want Torrential Gear, Gear Hulk to have a bunch of cool targets. I also have Magma Opus for this reason. So just a good amount of, looks like Matt does too, which is awesome. Um, just a good amount of targets for Torrential Gear Hulk. 
I don't have probe because unless you have S storm as a really strong component in your deck, I don't think it's, I don't really care about it. Like people love putting Gitaxian probe in their deck because it's a free spell and it lets you play effectively a 39 card deck. I want to play 40 cards. I would rather replace probe with something that does something. I have ponder preordain. I don't have hard evidence. I, I think hard evidence is pretty good. I like what it does. I like that it's a spell for the graveyard. I like that it's a spell that you can cast to trigger other things. I like that it adds an artifact and I like that it adds a blocker. It does a lot of things. Charter Course and Time Walk, Time Twister and Tinker, these are the exact same ones I have. He has Lorien Revealed. I haven't added Lorien Revealed or the any of the other uh, land cyclers to my cube yet. Um... I just don't know if this is as needed. It's it's played a ton in modern because you can just skimp on lands and play these. It's probably still good. I could see cutting like factor fiction for this actually because as you cast them, they're kind of similar. They're both card. They're both expensive card draw spells. Sure, one's four, one's five, one's an instant, one's a sorcerer. I guess they're not the same. But being able to just just land to island cycle and get a breeding pool or like any, um. Any try land is pretty good. I, I think this card is good. Uh, yeah, I have Echo, Time Sparkle, and Upheaval. I do not have Mind's Desire again for the same reason. No, no real Storm component. I do have Brain Storm or Brain Freeze in my in my cube because I think this is the one I want you to work for. If you're gonna if you're gonna storm out, I have High Tide. If you're gonna storm out, play Brain Freeze, right? And then you could have World Spine Worm in your deck. You can have. Eldrazi in your deck. Like, there's ways around losing to a brain freeze. If they tendrils you, it's a lot harder. And it's just not fun watching people storm. So I'm kind of, I'm discouraging it. But I'm allowing, I'm, I'm like saying, okay, I'm going to let you storm, but you're going to have to work for it. Uh, I have, I have dream halls and treachery. I took out opposition because I just think it's never fun when people play it. And it also takes so much work to build around. There's so many times where I've had opposition and I'm like, well, I just don't have enough creatures or enough ways to make creatures for this to be good. You know, you'll have a normal creature deck with a normal creature distri distribution distribution, and you'll get an opposition and you're just like, it's not enough. I don't have the, any of the hermits. I don't have any like, you know, uh, creature, mass creature production, things like that. And I just think it, it leads to oppressive games where like if your opponent does have that and they get opposition, it's just not fun. So those are my criticisms on white and blue. So I think next time we're going to go over black and red, then green and multicolor, then we'll do the colorless and the lands, or we can do green and colorless and multicolor and lands, something like that to make it a little more even. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about the difference in cubes. Let me know if there's any cards that you like or don't like um, when comparing these two. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.